really, I think the the reason why fashion is getting involved and why we're involving fashion is uh, because this is this is technology that is going to be worn. It is very much more intimate than a computer that is sitting on your desk. And uh, people wear things because it's a way of self-expression, because it's comfortable, because it says something about them, because it fits with their lifestyle. Uh, and technology needs to learn how to be that kind of flexible and adaptable and meet those needs. Uh, and so, you know, from our perspective, I mean, that's why we're partnering with, you know, fashion houses like Opening Ceremony to bring the Mika product. It's because we recognize that they have an expertise in terms of a design and aesthetic that we do not. We can bring the technical expertise, but they bring the design side. Um, and so, yeah, those uh, those those industries are, are kind of colliding together. You saw, you know, Don von Furstenberg for Glass, uh, Tory Burch for Fitbit. Um, there's all these people. All the, Rebecca Minkoff released a new uh, wearables line. So the the fashion house is recognizing the need to incorporate technology and get into the space. Um, as just says, people from the technology side are recognizing a need to partner with the fashion houses because they know clothes, we know technology. So those two things are going to be coming together and both sides are going to have to learn how to work together to kind of bring this feature to life. In some aspects you're limiting it to a niche audience then in terms of because the, the higher up you go in the fashion chain, the, the, the limited amount of uh, consumers you find, which is nothing wrong about it. Uh, you just have to find your niche. But as a solutions provider in terms of technology, uh, you are, uh, you know, uh, the, the better thing for you is to penetrate the mass markets. Yeah, so when that, when you say fashion, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, the most avant-garde pieces that are worn by like two or three people. We're both wearing clothes right now. Somebody sat together and thought about how those clothes were designed or they're a derivative of a more leading uh, fashion design that was at one point out there. So um, it's really about, you know, where where is the leadership happening? Uh, in design and then how do we kind of take the learnings from that and move into a more like mass market position. Uh, let's spend a few light on the uh, application of this in the sports industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, taking it, we could take an example if you like, basketball or golf. Golf is more prevalent, I guess people like to spend more time trying to analyze the game, so I thought, you know, if you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I think the for sports, uh, there's obviously different levels. So there's a level where you're just like an amateur person, uh, and a lot of current wearables, um, you know, can, can play in that space where you're tracking heart rate. Like, so for example, the Intel SMS Audio product tracks heart rate from the headphones, or you're tracking movement, you know, with any one of the wrist-worn ones that are out there in the market. And so there's, you know, there's there's certain things that you can do for, let's say, amateur level people. Where it gets interesting is um, the people who are more than amateurs, but maybe not necessarily the top professionals. So you look at um, how there are athletes in the NBA or the NFL who go and work in labs where they measure how fast they run, they kind of impact the angle and they have all these sensors and they, they're in this immersive environment that figures out everything that they are doing and what are the couple of tweaks here and there that they need to do to improve their game. Not everybody is going to be in the NBA or the NFL or can afford to go after and spend right. time in those labs. So where can wearables uh, help someone who's maybe just like a varsity athlete or someone who's you know very committed to their sport but is not at that you know super premier level how can it help them uh, improve their game by uh, kind of bringing the technology from a something that's only for people with the most access at the premier like taking that 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 capability to something that's more accessible um, just as how, you know, in the past, only people who were uh, had certain access and capability could have a cell phone in their pocket. Now there's people in developed countries all over the world who carry cell phones. Um, technology has the ability to kind of move down that chain. Uh, once, uh, you know, the market stabilizes, do you think 
it will go to continue in terms of the hardware itself, or we think the app market will take over a lot more in terms of wearables? Uh, I think there's room to grow for both um, because unlike with many of the technological innovations of the past, I don't think we're going to land on one form factor that solves everything. The hardware will need to continually adapt and offer different kinds of experiences and form factors and f features to the end consumer to satisfy all the needs that are out there. Uh, and then I do think uh, something that is very nascent right now, but like you're alluding to, an app ecosystem for wearables will become more and more relevant because as soon as the platform gains enough traction, then that allows a certain critical mass where people can start conceiving about developing just pure software plays on an overall platform. When, you, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, when you're thinking about partnerships, you go to the partner that makes sense. When people who make computers were thinking about phones, they partner with, you know, a Motorola or, or an AT&T or a Verizon. Um, now that we're thinking about things that we have to wear, it makes logical sense that we go to the people who have built the expertise from a design and delivery and a competency standpoint in giving true wearable products. You talk to anybody in fashion and they'll say, everything that we do is wearable, right? Uh, that is that is what they that is what they know and what they deliver and they excite their their customers with. So um, it, it makes sense for technology companies to to partner with them like us. So I think you know I, I think I might have alluded to this a little bit in the panel, but where we're, where I see we're going to go with notifications is right now uh, we get a lot of information, but it's not necessarily the information that we want at the right time. Uh, and sometimes we want uh, information to be maybe cached for us, to be read at another time. Sometimes we want it only in certain occasions. So what wearables can deliver is an opportunity for us to step away from the screen, which we've kind of been locked into for many, many years now as our only interface with technology. Uh, so they can offer us an opportunity to get separated from the screen, uh, basically deliver us information in an intuitive fashion uh, when we want it with context. Context and understanding how our environment plays a role in terms of what we want and when we want it will be something that hopefully the future of this industry will help deliver. So which I think um, it's it's a bit up in the air, right? Uh, so there's there's possibilities. Right now we we very much over index on site. Um, so if I have to look at something else and I'm not looking around me and I'm not aware of my surroundings, uh, audio is, 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 is something that's different as well. Uh, so it's really a combination of not necessarily any one sense winning out, but the right sense at the right time. Like so, it could be could be smell, could be touch, uh, it could just be you know a, some kind of a sixth sense where you you have there's there's just a combination of information that your subconscious can process such that you know uh, a, a critical piece of information at that time. So I I don't think we are at the stage to necessarily pick winners or losers from senses perspective. Okay. I think uh, the there will be certain interfaces that will end up being standards for how you receive certain kinds of information, right? Um, if you're talking about navigation and there's five competing products out there that all engage with the user in five completely different ways, uh, we're going to isolate on the, the handful of ways that are intuitive to people and people are comfortable with, right? Um, there's, like, again, I, I think the, the market and these solutions have not been completely hacked yet. So once, once, we, once, we, once that kind of like works itself out, uh, really the market will speak for itself. People will use the things that are easiest to use. People will use the things that are most intuitive to use. I don't have to make, and force them to change how they behave and how they live dramatically. Uh, and at the, in the end, it's really what the customer wants that will win out. 
I, you know, I really like, um, and this is this is gonna sound more like a like a plug, but it's it's not really because I really do like it. Even though I'm not the one working on it right now, but I do like the Intel the SMS audio headphones because that allows me to continue to listen to music while working out while not wearing something else to keep track of my heart rate. Right, so now I don't have to have another device as much as possible as I can have a seamless experience where I don't have to put anything else on, I don't have to plug a power supply, I don't have to wrap anything around my chest. It just kind of works, I don't have to worry about it. That's what I like about that. Uh, in terms of a future wearable concept, I would love to see something that is completely seamless and something that I don't necessarily have to think about. So if if you have a device, if you have a technology that can be embedded into fabrics of all my shirts, you know, such that every time I have a, a text message, my left cuff buzzes, but it, then it doesn't matter which shirt I'm wearing because they're all enabled, because it's all embedded and it's all seamless. Uh, I think that would be very useful. And then, you know, looking forward as how the Internet of Things goes, you know, wearables doesn't have to be completely encapsulated. My, me and what I wear can interact with the environment around me. So, for example, if I am in a building and I want to, you know, walk up, I'm sorry, like say I'm in a hotel, can I just open my key room with my shirt, with my, with my jacket, with my sunglasses, right? Um, do I need to, uh, I, I, I think technology needs to work for the customer, the customer should not have to work for technology.